This episode is supported by 23andMe. I'm so excited. <laughs> I didn't think there was gonna be an opportunity for like, you get to handle liquid oxygen. Oh yeah. <laughs> Throw the switch down. Pour the liquid oxygen. Okay. And then lift the switch. I feel nervous. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I'm here at MIT with one of the technicians from the physics demo group, preparing to pour liquid oxygen over a magnetic field created by some super strong electricity. Let me repeat that, liquid oxygen. I've never seen liquid oxygen. And they let me pour it. By the way, I'm Diana and you're watching Physics Girl. Gently. Okay. And then, uh, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't, I can't believe this demo. It is really cool. I was freaking out because the liquid was just hanging there between two magnetized pieces of metal. Liquids aren't supposed to do that in my experience, but this liquid was just hanging there in a magnetic field created by electricity. And as soon as you turn off the electricity, well, let's see what happens. There's no surface tension effect here. That's amazing. Nope. As soon as I turn it off, Oh my gosh. Can I do it again? In all my time at MIT, no professor ever did this demo for us. So disappointing because the physics here is really cool. First thing, there are electromagnets, which are made by running electricity through coils of wire. Two coils that when we pass a DC current through them, mm -hmm. it's going to create a magnetic field between these two giant pieces of metal. <laughs> these are what are becoming magnetized okay. by the DC current running through these coils. The result is a strong magnetic field around the metal pieces, but most importantly, in the gap between them. It's just like a strong magnetic field between two permanent magnets, except you can turn it off. Now, if you poured liquid nitrogen or water or alcohol in between the two pieces of metal, you wouldn't get any of it hanging around and partying. You might get a few droplets of water sticking to the surface because of surface tension, but though the liquid oxygen has surface tension, it's not what's causing the liquid to stick to the metal here because the oxygen boils away too quickly at the interface. It's the Leidenfrost effect. Then why is the oxygen hanging out? Well, it's because different materials have different responses to external magnetic fields. Your face is pretty unresponsive to a strong magnetic field. Iron is visibly responsive to an external magnetic field. I don't recommend doing that with your neodymium magnets. Hot iron acts differently, as we'll see when we heat up this piece of metal with a blowtorch. Yeah, stay tuned for that. But liquids don't usually visibly react to magnetic fields, and yet liquid oxygen clearly does. By the way, liquid oxygen is oxygen cooled down below 90 Kelvin. In Fahrenheit, that's when your spit freezes way before it hits the ground. So liquid oxygen has this property called paramagnetism. It reacts mildly to an external magnetic field, and all the little mini magnets that make up the oxygen align with the external magnetic field. These mini magnets I'm talking about are basically the little magnetic moments of the electrons in the oxygen's atoms. You can really think of a magnet being made up of tiny, 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 tiny little magnets all aligned in the same direction. But in a paramagnetic material, as soon as you turn off the external magnetic field, all those little mini magnets go back to pointing in random directions. Now, iron, in turn, has ferromagnetic properties. So all of its little mini magnets align strongly with an external magnetic field and even keep some of that alignment after the field is removed. But there's a point when even the mini magnets in ferromagnetic materials won't align, and it's when you get them hot enough. Yep, so this is just a little magnet, and then we have a thermally insulating plate so that we don't damage our magnet. Oh, that's okay, that's not stuck on there that hard. Nope. Yeah, just loosely. Yeah. Okay. So, like, it takes a little while. We're heating the iron metal here past what's called the Curie point. There's too much energy, too much random motion of the magnetic moments for them to align. And so the iron no longer sticks to the magnet. This is just like how it's impossible to get a bunch of preschoolers to line up if they have a ton of energy. But if you freeze them, I mean metaphorically, if you let the iron cool back down. If it cools, it will actually be redrawn the magnet. The Curie point of iron is around 1043 Kelvin, which is incidentally around the temperature when iron starts to get hot enough to emit visible light, which is why it's glowing here. I really enjoy these demonstrations, and we tried some other demonstrations and some other stuff with these demos. Can you, can you just like, oh wow, there's a big spark there too. So that's a back EMF. 
We actually have one that will do a huge back EMF when you lift it. Oh. We can just wheel that one out. Right? We did wheel that out. I'm going to save that demo for next week, though. Thank you to the technical services group at MIT. They were amazing. They made all of this possible. Thank you guys for watching this video. Subscribe if you want more physics, and hit the notification bell if you want to know when my videos come out. And happy physicsing. Thanks to 23andMe for sponsoring this episode. 23andMe DNA analysis was created to help people understand their DNA. You'll be able to see what regions of the world your ancestors came from and learn how your DNA influences your facial features, your hair color, your sleep patterns, even your taste preferences. Like why I can't get enough cheesecake in my life. The name 23andMe comes from the fact that human DNA is organized into 23 pairs of chromosomes. Head over to 23andMe.com slash physics girl to learn more about their DNA analysis kit.